Good evening, spooky kids. Welcome to Sunday Night Frights with me, Sir Spookenstein. We're here to dust off some of these classic horror films we all love. Or hate. Tonight we are starting off with none other than the 1959 classic Wash Woman, starring Susan Cabot, Anthony Irsby, Michael Mark, Barbara Morris, and the incomparable Bruno Vichota. I can feel a stinging sensation that this will be an agonizing trip down horror history, definitely a B movie, or shall I say, a lost movie. <laughs> this was released on October 30th, 1959, giving people quite a scream on Halloween. Will she make it out alive or become Queen of the Hive? Let's find out, shall we? yourselves in your new home. Hey, my pitch? <laughs>
He has a great collection of BG albums in his box. from the bees. Always busy, busy, busy. Yes. Uh, what about this fellow, Dr. Zinthrop? Zinthrop? Boy, there's a nut. Him and his bees. You know, it wouldn't surprise me someday to see him flapping his arms, taking off after some queen bee with the rest of the drones. Mm -hmm. Well, he's paid to do research on royal jelly. Haven't had a progress report from him in a month. Well, he has a little workshop up there back of the orange grove. Keeps a few colonies. I suppose I'd better go up there and take a look. Hey, you! Where's this fellow been from? Oh, he's up where the extractor is, up there. Huh. Hey, hey. This isn't a honeybee. These are wasps. Wasps? Who's responsible for this? Most likely Dr. Zinthrop, sir. I told you it was a crack pot. Zinthrop, huh? Zinthrop. Ah. B-11, you sunk my battleship! about what? I'm so glad you dropped it, Mr. Barker. Mr. Barker, I'm on the verge of a great discovery. Discovery? What do you mean? Well, sir, I always perfected a new method of extracting royal jelly from the queen wasp. According to my figures, you're better at extracting funds from the company. Now, look here, Zinthrop, over a thousand dollars last month for miscellaneous. Yes, yes, I know, but Mr. Barker, let me just show you something. Just let me show you something. Already, I've learned to slow the process of aging. Soon, I shall be able to reverse it entirely. What are you getting at, Zinthrop? Look, what do you see? I see a big dog and a little dog. 
Let's say an old dog and a young dog. All right. So what? Well, they're exactly the same age. You see, the little one, Greta, has been given regular injections of my compound from the Queen Wasp. Just like I told you, Mr. Barker. Now look here, Zentrum. I understand about science and progress and all that, but you were obtained to extract Queen Bee Royal Jelly. Now, it's a health food, a, a cosmetic. It, it's not a, a miracle drug or an elixir of youth. That sort of thing is impossible. Oh, but Mr. Fork is... Zentrup, I, I'm sorry, Zentrup, but I'm going to have to let you go. You just don't seem to be one of the team. You, you understand. Good luck. I'm sure you'll fit in somewhere. Like maybe the asylum? Fit in. Somewhere. Oh, no, no. Don't worry, my friend. We shall find a home somehow. Somewhere. Oh, but you sound impatient. I know. It's your babies, huh? They're hungry and uh, they must be fed. Uh, now, now, how would you like a nice, juicy little caterpillar, huh? Yeah, you'd like that, wouldn't you? There. Now, you must eat them. Be strong because, well, we have a lot of work to do together. Yes, sir. gentlemen, sales for the last fiscal quarter have dropped. Fourteen and one half percent. There has not been a corresponding drop in our competitive sales. I trust one of you gentlemen has a satisfactory explanation for this decline. Two of those gentlemen seem an awful lot like women. Not one little suggestion, gentlemen. We'll start with you, Thompson. As public relations manager, no doubt you have some faint glimmering of what's happening to Stalin products. Well, Thompson? Well, you see, I, uh... I had no idea you were such an excellent public speaker, Thompson. Oh, I'm sorry, Miss Stalin. I guess I'm not feeling very well this morning. I'm sorry you aren't. I think I can tell you why Stalin products are falling off so badly, Miss Stalin. We're listening, Lane. Where would you put the responsibility for this decline? On you, Miss Stalin. I imagine you have arguments to support that contention. We've all been looking at it for the past 20 minutes. The most convincing argument is right on that graph. May I show you? Thank you. Now, right here in April is when Stalin sales started falling off. Very clever of you, Lane. Would you mind waiting until I finish, Miss Stalin? That's enough, Lane. Relax, Willis. My apologies for the interruption. Go on. Thank you. Now, as I said, sales began to fall in April. But the reason for the fall was back here in February. Now, the Stalin products have always been thought of as something of a, a modern miracle in the cosmetics trade. A firm built to a multi-million dollar a year business on the strength and appeal of, of one person, Janice Stalin. From the beginning right through until February of this year, only one woman's face was used to advertise those products. You're, You're not right, so Stalin. beautiful is what I'm trying, trying to say, honey. honey. As a symbol. Well, now, after 16 years, they see a different face. They, they don't trust it. They feel cheated. The simple fact is that Stalin Cosmetics should have Janice Stalin's picture advertising them. Well, that's about all I've got to say. And a darn good job of saying it, too. I agree. Uh, Lane makes a lot of sense on that score, Miss Stalin. I think I've had enough flattery for one morning, gentlemen. It's a very convincing argument, Lane. There's a Mr. Sempter to see Miss Stalin. There's only one small factory we've overlooked. 
Not even Janice Darlin can remain a glamour girl forever. Miss Darlin? Yes, Mary. There's a Mr. Zinthrop in reception. He says he has an appointment. Thank you. Huh? It's been a very informative get-together. It'll be all for now. Something on your mind, Miss Dolan? You've done some work on royal jelly, haven't you? Oh, a little. Are there any real therapeutic values in it? Oh, I'd say so. Of course, uh, a lot depends on each individual's reaction to the stuff. What do you mean? It's just that no two people react in precisely the same way. One man's meat's another man's poison. Oh. But you think royal jelly can be beneficial in some cases. Queen Bee said a lot of stuff about it. I'll accept that as an affirmative answer. Supposing a more powerful form of royal jelly could be obtained. From the Queen Wasp, for example. I mean, would you suppose that might have some rejuvenating effect on a human being? I'd stay away from wasps if I were you, Miss Dolan. Socially, the queen wasp is on a level with the black widow spider. They're both carnivorous. They paralyze their victims and then take their time devouring them alive. Just and they like kill Roseanne their mates in the Bob. same way, too. Strictly a one-sided romance. Well, I'm, I'm not exactly interested in, in the love life of the queen wasp. I want your opinion on the possibilities of using enzyme extracts from royal wasp jelly, commercially. Well, if you want an honest opinion, Miss Stone... Of course I want an honest opinion. And my advice is forget about it. Thank you, Arthur. Any time, Miss Stone. I will give you the time, Miss Darwin. Oh, yes. Plenty of time I give you. Ten, maybe fifteen years I give you. I want you to understand one thing very clearly, Mr. Zinthrop. I expect absolute proof of what you claim in your letter. Tangible proof, not words. <laughs> Such proof you shall get, madame. And more. But I think I better show you in the laboratory, yes? Please, I'll do anything you want. Just drop that horrible accent. Look. They look terrible. Why don't you put them out of their misery? Madame, you ask for proof? Please be kind enough to look at proof you ask for. May I proceed? Madame, you shall see a miracle you shall not believe. Oh, no tricks. <laughs> you may look if you like. I have no tricks. Well, don't look at me. <laughs> I'm not changing.
What a trick you turned a guinea pig into a rat. I don't believe it. It's not possible. Oh, Jesus. I see you do not believe one animal, so I bring two. I, uh, I show you again? Yes? Yes, I must be sure. Yes, madam. Here, you pesky buzzers. Oh. 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 Aha. Welcome back. <laughs> I hope you're enjoying this film tonight. Boy, do I hate wasps. I carry a knife with me, just in case one lands on my wife's neck. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, I'm kidding, of course. You know what they say. What you don't know won't hurt you. Ha <laughs> ha! Well... Last week, I didn't know a wasp had crawled in my slip, and it hurt me quite a bit. Once again, the so-called experts got it wrong. Well, we will be right back with more of Wasp Woman right after this break. Don't fly far, or I'll find you. years ago, there was this boy named Charlie Parson, and let's just say he was the most popular kid in school. successful, well, I ask for a little percentage. But I must get full credit for my discovery that is most important to me. I'll have Gordon draw up the contract. Oh, contracts, contracts, I do not need to give you your word. Good enough for it. You amaze me. Frankly, when I received your letter, I thought you were just a, another eccentric. But there's always a chance you might not be. Then you walk in here and show me nothing short of a miracle. Two miracles. And you say that you'll accept my word that I won't cheat you. You won't. I know you're a good woman, even if you do not like other people to know it. However, uh, my formula may not be good for human beings. I have not tested yet. You will on me. Oh, no, 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 no. There might be danger. Those are my terms, Mr. Fincher. Janice Darwin will be your next guinea pig. Okay, if you want to turn into a rat, okay, well, that's all right with me. It take a little time to prepare sufficient extract, a week, maybe more. I'll make whatever arrangements you may need for your equipment. Thank you, madame. Now I see how you built all this. <laughs> I'm very close to losing it, Mr. Zinthrop. Maybe working together we can save Janice Darwin Enterprises. Maybe even make it bigger than ever before. Yes. Oh, yes. I'm sure the next three months we'll see a rise in Starlin sales that will surpass anything we've dared imagine. 
Mr. Zinthrop is working on the final stages of a development that will revolutionize the cosmetic industry. He's to have a free hand in his experiments and will be answerable to no one but myself. At the moment, I cannot divulge the nature of Mr. Zinthrop's experiments, but I can assure you it will bring worldwide recognition to Janice Darwin Enterprises. <laughs> Zinthrop really isn't on the level. After all, we don't even know what he's working on. It could be very legitimate. Oh, you are as bad as she is. Oh, women. <laughs> men. Every time you're stuck to an answer, you always come up with women. You're not getting out of this one so easily. I'd like to know why you think Zinthrop really hasn't got something. Well, you can call it male intuition, if you like. It's just that there's something about this whole business that doesn't smell right. The private laboratory, the secret experiments, Zinthrop himself. The only thing that's missing is a genie with a lamp. You better leave the intuition to me. Come on, I'll let you buy me dinner. Buy you dinner? What's happened to your sporting blood? I thought we were going to toss for the check. Oh, no. You won the last three times. All right, look, I'll make a deal with you. Dinner is on me if you promise to keep an eye on what goes on in there. Well, what do you want me to do? Read her mail and send her messages and keep her code? You could do worse. Oh, no, Mr. Cooper, not you, too. I've been trying to tell Bright Eyes here that I think Zenthrop is a phony and a confidence man. If I were sure of that, I wouldn't be worried. I think he's a lot more dangerous. A quack. Well, I don't follow you, Coop. Well, a confidence man would just be interested in your money. The only damage they can do is to your pocketbook. A quack can be fatal. Say no to quacks, kids. So I'm back to him. I said, listen, Ivy. I'm getting sick of this TV every night. I mean, you know, we can do the same thing in a nightclub. Well, almost. Good morning. Janice Darlin Enterprises. I got two words for you. Drop dead. Twice. Irving? Calls me to tell me Dr. Cyclops is on Channel 9 tonight. What's the trust? I've seen it twice already. Good morning. Is, uh... Is Miss Darlin in her office now? Hmm? Oh, Miss Darlin's in conference. Would you like to speak to her secretary? Oh, no, no, no. Just say to Miss Darlin, I should like to see her when she has time. Huh? Yes. Was there something else, Mr. Zimpson? Oh, no, 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 no. Goodbye. Goodbye. A regular two-eyed Dr. Cyclops. Even the bow. Good morning. May I see Miss Zardling, please? <laughs> He's a real weirdy. Wonder what his game is. Who okay. cares? You know, Morton thinks he's a crackpot. I heard him telling Cooper so. Old Bug Eyes really has the execs worried. But what? That's just it. They don't know. Oh. So anyway, back to Irving. Good morning. Good morning. I couldn't get away any sooner. Is it important? 
important. Miss Dolan, do you remember the big cat I showed you last week? No. What about it? Well, I want you to look at him. Come. No. Quite a difference, yes? has carte blanche to order anything he requires. It is no concern of yours, Gleason. Make out a check for the full amount. Sue? Mary. Can I talk to Mr. Lane a Bill? Hey, listen. Gleason just got a bill for $2,300. Enzyme extracts. Yes, 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 we are making progress. There's great improvement in the tissue. Why is it taking so long? It's the third week. You forget, my dear, there's more to you than a little kitten, no? Huh? And the cat was already Besides, a lot more cute. The difference in metabolism. Why not increase the dosage? Wouldn't that step up the process? Patience, my dear, patience. We must tread lightly with care, Your Honor, please. <laughs> You know, I have been experimenting with the concentrated solution of the enzymes. Oh, a great deal more powerful than the solution I've been using in your injection. Oh? Yes. And I think, I think it will be better for lotions. As an emollient lotion, it will make estrogenic creams and all such products old-fashioned. My dear, Stalin will be world famous, bringing you to millions. You're right, Sintra. There are going to be a few red faces in my advertising department. But I am right. Why, your own mirror will tell you that I am right. Why, you look at least five years younger than you looked three weeks ago. Uh -huh. I know.
you talk to Bill a minute, sir? Thanks. Bill? I think I've got it. <laughs> yeah, I'm a nervous wreck. At lunch. At lunch. You'll have to translate for me, Cook. I'm not very good at that technical stuff. Pseudo-technical. Now, Mr. Zinthrop is a very capable confidence man, from what I read in this letter. He claims he can stimulate the processes of rejuvenation through the use of enzymes extracted from wasps. Oh, for... Well, what are you two Sherlock's going to do about it? Right now, I don't know. Frankly, I'm getting tired of the whole business. That woman's so intent on holding back time, she's ready to fall for the first phony line she hears. Wasps. Bill. Face the facts. Mary Janice Starlin has built her whole life on youth and beauty. Now that she's losing them, she's scared to death. For right now, she's on cloud nine with that quack Zenthrop that I'd hate to be around when she comes back down to Earth. Well, maybe we can let her down easy. I think we owe her that much. Yeah. Well, what are we going to do? We can't just let Zenthrop build up her hopes and then knock the props out from under her. How can he do such a terrible thing? Poor Jan. There must be something we can do before it's too late. He's got a mighty convincing argument. Very impressive to the layman. Ten to one, he's got a record just as impressive. What are ways to find out? The answer might be right here in our hands. Ted. I'm going to keep this letter for a day or two. Wait a minute. Suppose she finds out it's gone. I'm the only one with access to that desk. She'll know I took it. Well, that's a chance you have to take, Mary. I think we can be pretty sure that Coop knows what he's doing, huh? Well, come on, young lover.
Mr. Zentra. Mr. Zinthrop wasn't a, a conventional employee. He didn't go through regular personnel. Uh-huh. You say he came here about a month ago. Well, how did he come here, Miss Starlin? He just didn't walk in off the street, did he? Well, he didn't fly in. The letter. Right here in my drawer. Maybe uh, one of the other drawers. So that's what she meant. What who meant? Miss Starlin. The letter's been taken and you think you know who took it, is that right? My secretary, Miss Dennison. You got her address handy? Her phone number. It might be better if I busted in on her cold. This way she'll have a chance to prepare a story. I know what I'm doing. All right. Mary? Janice, darling. But before I went to lunch, I made a duplicate copy of Mr. Zendrick's letter. I was going to take that one to Bill and Mr. Cooper at first. But then I thought that the original would be better. Have you got the copy? Yes, it's in my desk. Get that copy, Miss Tennyson. Uh, please, would have been uh, nice. 946 West 73rd Street, Manhattan. Yeah, that's right. Get right on it, Jerry, and check back with me as soon as you can. Sure, he's our boy. Uh-huh. Is he? 
Central emergency. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, it looks like we've got him. This is John Doe down at Central Emergency, auto accident. There's no identification on him, but he was wearing a lab smock and Phil Zinthrop's description. Mary, get my coat and it's late. Get a cab downstairs. He badly hurt. Head injury, general contusions of the body. And you were there. And you were there. Oh, Auntie Ellen, it was the most horrible dream. How long before you'll know? It's hard to say, Miss Darling. Who's the best man for this kind of injury? Well, there are several top specialists. Get the best. I'll take full responsibility for the expenses. Yes, Miss Darling. I don't know, Arthur. I think it best we wait. But it's been three days since the accident, Jan. And no sign of improvement. He's still in a coma. You heard what the doctor said. He may never regain consciousness. And even if he does, who knows how badly his brain has been damaged. Well, I'll give it another 48 hours. He doesn't regain consciousness by then. Now you can take over the laboratory, Arthur. Uh, Janet. It's my decision. boy mysteries. I could run a qualitative analysis.
Excuse me, uh, Miss Starlin. What is it, Thompson? Well, I think we should be a little conservative, Miss Starlin. Uh, cosmetics are one thing, medications another. We're liable to run into trouble. Yes. All advertising copy will be cleared through your office. Well, it's a touchy business, you know. Max is right, Miss Starlin. You don't have to second the motion, then. one thing understood very clearly now, gentlemen. Janice Stalin Enterprises is going to bring the most fantastically saleable product ever developed by Modern Cosmetics to the public. And I don't intend to be restricted by timidity on the part of my own staff. Is that clear? Are you all right, Miss Stalin? Can I get you something? I'm all right. I'm all right. Thank you. I have some aspirin in my purse. It's all right, Mary. Well, that'll be all for now, Jack. equipment now and the ambulance is due any minute. Well, be sure to let me know when it arrives. Oh, Mary, please, before you go, could you see if you could work that thing? Oh, sure. I've seen lots of these. And Miss Warren has a room adjoining yours, so there'll be someone near you at all times. Thank you. Thank you. When you're feeling better, Mr. Fenton, there are a few things I'd like to discuss with you. Good, good. Tell you 
something it's important but important but uh, I cannot remember uh, I'm sure it can wait right now the main thing is to get you back to help take good care of you Miss Warren yes Miss Darling it sure is funny about old Coop and this is one day at work and you're ready to call Miss in person well, he's a pretty conscientious guy, honey. If he felt sick or something, he'd have called in. Relax. We'll probably be in bright and chipper in there. Interesting, something? Oh, we were just having a little coffee clutch, Miss Starlin. We were talking about Mr. Cooper. What about Mr. Cooper? Well, about his missing the meeting this morning. Nobody's been able to reach him all day. I wouldn't worry about that. Oh, he's probably facing some personal issues. Probably feel he's entitled to take a day for himself now and then. That's what I've been trying to tell Mr. Lane. Oh, by the way, Miss Starlin, how is Mr. Zinthrop? Oh, fine. In a few days, we'll uh, start the layoffs for the campaign. Oh, I'm ready when you are, boss. Look this over. Hey, Bill. Don't go getting any ideas about the boss. For me? Don't be silly. I just wanted to know that I'm an eager member of the team. Still, she is looking a lot younger these days, isn't she? You think Zinthrop would give you any of those treatments? You know, break the watch or something? Uh... Mr. Green, that personnel is his responsibility. I have other things to think about than worrying whether the night watchman walked off the job. Well, that's just it, Miss Darlin. Mr. Green feels that the watchman never left the building. His lunch pail and his raincoat are still in the basement. I don't want to hear anything more about it, Mary. All right, Miss Darlin. Will you see? Where she heard a scream from one of the other floors. Zinthra heard it too, but she convinced Timmy was having a bad dream. Oh, maybe they both were. That's not funny anymore, Mary. There's something going on in that building. And I'm going to find out what it is. How? Oh. Have a look around Cooper's lab, for one thing. After that, I don't know. Hold steady. Bill, this is crazy. We can really get in trouble. I won't hire him tomorrow, but it is important. All right, Miss Darlin, I'll be in my room. Sinfrog. Sinfrog, you've got to help me. Something's happening. Something's happening to me. I can't control it. Oh, mental pause is a horrible thing, my dear. Try to think. The wasp enzymes. The extracts you, you were experimenting with before the accident. Try to think. Well, this is Zenthrop's notebook, Mary. Notes on his experiments with Jan. Well, how did Cooper get hold of it? I don't know. If only Cooper would show up. Mary, look. It's Mr. Cooper's pipe. Well, don't you get it? He's going to go out without his pants and leave that pipe behind. He's still somewhere in the building. I bet he hears salary on it. If he is, he... He's dead. 
and the night watchman. There's only enough left for one more injection. One more. You've got to make more of them. Help me, Gates. Not in the way. knows what's behind all this. It's him. Mr. Zinthrop. Bill. Look at else is still in there. She wouldn't go out without her purse. Bill, let's get out of here. I don't like it. I can't. I can't. I must warn her. Mr. Zinter. Who? Who are you? Well, there's nothing to be alarmed about, Mr. Zinter. I'm Bill Lane, and this is Miss Dennison, Miss Starlin's secretary. Miss Starlin? The cat? What about a cat? Must warn her. Injections. Must not take any more injections. Is Miss Darlin in danger? Terrible danger. I, I was... Take it easy, Mr. Uh, Zentrop. You're still pretty weak. Mary, see if you can get Jan on the phone. All right. All right. There's no answer. Is that you, Mary? Where are you? We're in the building. We're in Mr. Zittrup's room. Something's happened down here. Let me talk to her. Hello, Miss Starlin. This is Lane. Why are you and Mary still in the building? Oh, I must help. Don't want to stop, Mary. Uh, yeah. I must help. Uh, I must not I can't explain now, Miss Starlin. I must, I must go. Hold on to it. I must help. Uh, you must not hold me back. I'm... Don't worry, Mr. Zittrup. We won't let anything happen to Miss Starlin. Uh, hello. What's going on down there? Stay in your office. I'll be right up. Keep an eye on Zinthrop, honey. I'm going upstairs. Oh, no. No, no. The insects. The insects. Take it easy, Mr. Zinthrop. You do not understand. Miss Darling, she's in danger. I, I must warn. Look, I'll have to I stay must... here. You go for Jan. Okay. Uh, when you get up there, call the police. You can't get outside on this phone. All right. All right. I'll hurry. Now, what is this? 
The enzymes. The enzymes, they've, they've gone crazy. Sure, Mr. Zentrofi, you just relax and take it easy. Everything will be all right. We'll take care of those. You do not you understand. Them. You do not understand that girl. You shouldn't have sent her upstairs. She's in danger. You must stop her before it is too late. Okay, as soon as the cops get here, we'll oh, take her. Oh, you fool, you fool. Miss Darling will kill her and tear her body to shreds. Miss Darling, kill Mary? Miss Darling is not a human being any longer. The enzymes have changed her. She will destroy the girl as a female wasp would destroy her enemies and then devour the remains. <sighs> then Bill found Mr. Zintrup's notebook in Cooper's desk. Oh, no, there's no mistake. We've got to call the police now. Now, Mary, you're just getting a little excited. Now, who could possibly want to hurt Mr. Cooper? No. Wasp and all for those pounding, screaming, oh God, I want to kill you, headaches. dead on my feet. <laughs> well, we appreciate the time you have spent with us tonight and hope you join us next week. Just keep in mind, until next time, if something's bugging you, <laughs> get it off your chest. 
If you hold it in too long, you may become a murderous insect person too. Night, my special spooky people. Ha ha ha.